Hey guys, welcome to my very late top 10 episodes of Star Trek The Original Series Season 2 video. I do thank you guys for your patience. This is something that I've been putting off because I've been kind of dreading the editing part of it. But I really feel like I should finish this up before I'm done with Season 3 of the original series, which I am halfway through at this point. As always, making a list of favorites and picking out favorite things for me is always something that I found difficult. Of course, our favorites in these kind of situations will always be changing. Uh, it's a very fluid list and I do feel pretty comfortable and confident about my top three though, for sure. Like those are, those are locked in. The order of everything else, I kind of tried, but it was really hard because I felt like all of them I felt kind of equally, like, amazed about. So maybe don't pay too close attention to the order of 10 through 4, because they're all really, really good in their own way. Alright, so let's get started with number 10. I think there's a couple of these episodes or placements of episodes that are going to surprise you. Maybe an episode or two that you thought would be here, that you would put here, that doesn't end up here. I'm thinking of one episode in particular, but I think this one will surprise some of you guys that it has currently made it to my top 10. And this episode is a piece of the action. I remember when I first watched it, I thought it was just kind of okay. It had its moments, but it didn't wow me. And some people got really personally offended by that. <laughs> but I wasn't really jiving with like the setting and the the characters from the planet, the Iotians. But this episode is really extremely fun. And as I've kind of let some of the things simmer. I've rewatched uh, my reactions a couple times in preparation for this list, and I've watched like the guys over at the Target audience. Um, so I've I've been exposed to these episodes like a few times now, and this is an episode that's really grown on me. I think the costumes were great, seeing. Kirk and Spock dress up in the way that they did was really fantastic. Kirk adopting that kind of accent and even Spock joining in later on with some of the lingo and stuff. We get to see Kirk's creativity as he makes up on the fly the game of Fizzbin with its crazy rules. Uh, the kid was really cute and perhaps surprisingly I think one of my favorite lines in and deliveries of a line in season two is Kirk's final line in this episode where he says oh, they're gonna come get a piece of our action and then it just cuts right there when I first watched it I was like really that was so cheesy and then watching it again as I was watching uh Alex and Josh's reaction over on target audience go check out their channel if you haven't but I'm pretty sure most of you have seen it already when Kirk delivered that line and I, I had forgotten about it and then it was the most hilarious thing to me ever. <laughs> I don't know why. And lastly, I think it's really fun and interesting just to see how easily things uh, with a specific group of people can go crazy when um, they are left with something like the book about the mobsters of Chicago in the 20s and how it can contaminate their society but in this case it was in a really fun way so yeah for right now at least that is uh that is in my top 10 the a piece of the action for number nine i have bread and circuses i really like the setting of this episode we get to see a version of like ancient rome but in the modern times so to speak this is one of the things that I watched that sparked my interest in learning more about the Roman Empire and those times and the way things were back then. So I really have to give this particular episode some credit for that. It was fun to see Bones forced into fighting in gladiatorial combat. And we had a really, really great moment with Bones and Spock in the jail cell. And it was like very intimate, kind of steamy. 
situation, at least for me it was. I'm probably just weird in that way. But to me, it was like Spock was really like his his wall or his facade was kind of crumbling a little bit. And Bones was really kind of trying to take advantage of that moment of vulnerability. And I was really intrigued by Marcus's character. I thought the actor uh, who portrayed him did really well. And I was just so interested in how did he come to be in this position of power? And what exactly is going on in that mind of his? Things like that. So yeah, bread and circuses. For number eight, I have I Mud. I love Harry Mud, and I love the actor who portrays Harry Mud, Roger Carmel. Of course, I've only seen him as Mud, but he just brings so much personality, and he's kind of like a, a huge presence wherever he goes. He's got great facial expressions and just like this really likable but kind of sleazy character. This episode had one of my favorite moments so far that had me probably laughing the hardest that I've ever laughed in this show, which is the performance that the crew puts on for the androids to confuse their logical systems and things like that. And I just, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> I really can't. I especially love the phaser sounds that they did, but everything was great. There was some dancing, and one of my favorite lines of all, he's had too much happiness, but now he's happier he's dead. We get some poetry, just really, really fun stuff. So, Ima definitely has to be in my top 10. 100% and it probably could be higher than number eight but it's really tough because like I said I absolutely love everything that's coming up in the in the next episodes that I'm going to show you so let's get on to the next one the number seven episode is going to be Return to tomorrow and this episode is one of my favorites for lots of different reasons one being Leonard Nimoy's chilling performance as the alien Henok. Usually when I see Spock smile, it's a gift that we don't always see very often, a very rare gift, and it's heartwarming and, and sweet and cute. But this time it was just, it was creepy in a good way, like very well done the way he, he laughs, but I don't know how he does it. But it just really goes to show how great of an actor he is. This episode is also the episode where we get the risk is our business speech from Kirk, which is one that I love so much. It really captures part of that vital spirit of Star Trek of seeking out new life and adventuring and going where no man has gone before, even if it means putting themselves at risk of harm, something that's so important and vital to their cause. And I really love the twist when Nurse Chapel injects uh, Henok in Spock's body with the lethal compound and then it just kind of revealed about all like kind of the body swapping and things that were happening behind the scenes. I thought that was a really cool twist. It really like it was like an aha moment and that felt really fun to experience for the first time. And lastly, I really think that the goodbye between Sargon and Thalassa was so romantic and sweet and kind of got me in my feels. They share one last kiss before they depart into oblivion. For number six, I have Mirror Mirror. Such a fantastic episode. Some of the highlights of this episode, which there are many, we get Spock with a beard, we get Uhura's abs, we get amazing performances from Chekhov and Sulu as their more evil counterparts. We get Marlena, and we have Kirk single-handedly possibly changing the course of maybe an entire galaxy, planting that seed to the mirrored Spock to make a change in the way that the Empire runs things over there. And it gave me a lot to think about. Like, are these mirrored versions of them different because of their environment? Because that's just how they are physically how come the Hulkins are the same in both universes some interesting stuff 
lots of fun things to think about. And it's one of those episodes that helps you really appreciate what we have it, when we see what could have been with our characters and their morals and the way the Federation is. So yeah, I love this episode. Okay, now we're getting into the top five for whatever that's worth. The next couple could probably be interchanged with like number six and seven pretty easily. But here it is, number five, the immunity syndrome. If you guys haven't noticed, I am a huge sucker for the loving relationship when it's able to really be brought out into the surface between Kirk and Spock and Bones. And this episode showcases it very well. Their love for each other. They're willing to sacrifice for one another. I don't remember the specifics of the science about this episode, but I thought it was a really interesting concept. I liked the design of this organism. It looked absolutely wild. It kind of reminded me of like some episode of the magic school bus where the class would like shrink down so they can go inside the human body inside a cell or inside like a plant cell or something like that. Spock gets to go on this suicide mission that Bones also wanted to go on to save their friends. And there's a moment where Spock believes that he is not going to make it out back alive. And there's a moment that Kirk believes that Spock isn't going to make it out alive. And so Spock records his commendation for Kirk and the rest of the crew. And Kirk records his commendation for Spock. And it's just such a beautiful scene that makes me cry every time and i'm it's just i'm trying to hold it together even thinking about it and another one of my favorite lines possibly my favorite lines and deliveries and i know that everybody is a big fan of shut up spock we're saving you or however it goes but that one is great we get some really great bones lines in this episode but the one that i really like was when he was yelling at Spock that he botched the acetylcholine test. And he's trying to act all tough and not let Spock know that he's he was like really, really super worried about him and not the acetylcholine test. But the delivery of this line, the way his voice kind of wavers at the end, I feel like it's so masterfully done. And DeForest Kelly is just, a, he's just a master of his craft. He continues to amaze me with how he can deliver some of these lines. Like with so much emotion behind or underneath them, but without like being so in your face about it. It's very subtle, but it's very powerful. And yeah, basically any episode that does the, the bromance between those, those three really well will be something that I just can't get enough of. And that's my jam really. At number four, I have Journey to Babel or Babel. This episode is a treat for many reasons. We get to meet Spock's parents. We have a return of Mark Leonard, this time playing Sarek, Spock's father. It was really interesting to see the dynamic between his mom and dad, she being a human, he being a Vulcan, how a lot of the times they can really blend and mesh really well, but then how the Vulcan way of doing things can be a little bit much for our dear Amanda, especially during emotionally stressful situations like the one that was portrayed here. One of the things that I really loved about this episode was just visually seeing all the different aliens, the makeup and costuming and everything was amazing and just the design of all the aliens. It was fun to see the Enterprise so filled with a bunch of different people and races, so much color, the all the different food that was spread out. This was also really cool because we had kind of like a murder mystery uh, for a little bit there, a little whodunit situation, and just learning about Spock's upbringing and his relationship with his parents and just everything was just super fun to see. And despite Sarek and Spock both like father, like son, 
putting up this air of pure logicality and zero emotion i feel like we we saw a little we saw emotion i mean from spock for sure and even from Sarek, i think we could argue that he has emotions towards his son and his wife and it's just i just i loved it okay my top three i feel very strongly about these three in particular there was no question about what these ones were gonna be and number three is metamorphosis i know this isn't everyone's favorite episode and i can definitely understand why but if you guys saw my video on this and you'll know that it it really personally uh moved me and affected me the idea of being able to grow old with somebody that you love is something that i absolutely hope that i will be able to do with my husband but there was so much else going on in this the set on the planet was really cool it really kept us questioning everything every step of the way about exactly what was going on with this companion and what are its motives and we are introduced to the creator of the warp drive mr cochran here so very important character we get some lore which i always love learning more about the universe and how the federation in the galaxy came to be as it is as we know it in these episodes that we're watching so i love getting that history i just feel like this episode was so complex with the relationship between Cochrane and the companion how he thought it was one way it turned out to be another way he was very opposed to that he pushed back but eventually he came around the companion and Zephram Cochrane and the ambassador all get something that they were missing that they were wanting they kind of all get their happy ending and I think it's just a really touching and beautiful love story. Oh, and I haven't spoken much about the music. The music in this entire series is fantastic and I enjoy it all the time, but this particular episode stood out to me the most music-wise. I don't know or remember if this was the first time that these particular pieces of music were used in an episode, but it just worked so well here and that's about it this is an episode that moved me in a way that is difficult for me to articulate but you're just gonna have to believe me when i say that it it did move me very 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 strongly and deeply and i i really love it even though there wasn't a lot of action when i was watching it my mind was just racing a million miles a minute and so much was going on up in here and i just that is just so good so good Okay, number two, which I can't believe is not my number one, but there is one episode that has to take number one for me. So number two is the Doomsday Machine. This episode chilled me to my bone. I think the thing that pushed this episode so high for me is William Wyndham's performance as Matt Decker as well as how incredibly well this very complex, very human character was written. First of all, his performance at the very beginning. I didn't know this character at all, but it moved me to tears to see him so broken up about the loss of his ship and of his crew. I was feeling so sad for this man. I, I was falling in love with him and then and then he started taking command and maybe not making the right decisions and orders when Kirk wasn't around. And it was very frustrating with him trying to do these different things that seemed so incredibly stupid and pointless and dangerous for no reason, risky, not listening to what everybody was saying to him, not taking uh, their advice and counsel to where I started to really dislike this guy. And then by the end, I was really feeling for him because I just realized that he was a, a broken man who went through something traumatic and wasn't thinking straight at the time, just wanted to do the right thing and was trying to fix things that had gotten so messed up 
in a very desperate way. Him flying into that crazy looking, and we'll get to that in a second, doomsday machine. And just the, the terror on his face, the bright lights as he's engulfed by this. Super chilling, super creepy, disturbing, upsetting, and so wonderful because of that. But to go back to the look of this doomsday machine, it looked crazy. I loved the design of it. It was very menacing, this unfeeling, unintelligent, just death machine flying through the galaxy, gobbling up everything that came into its path. I loved when Kirk was speaking to Decker when they finally got into contact and he was like, I don't care about regulations. I'm in charge. Get my ship out of there. Get my crew out of there. And that just the tension when Kirk was on the constellation, seconds away from being sucked in by this huge gaping mouth. The transporters aren't working. And at the last second, he gets beamed aboard and saved. Even though as the audience, we know that he's going to obviously, you know, be, be saved at the end and he's going to be fine. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just like, I'm gripping my seat, I'm holding my breath. And then I felt such joy and elation when he was finally safe. And oh, it was just, oh man, so many emotions in this episode. This is like, this is peak Star Trek to me. And now it's time for my number one and by power of elimination, you can probably guess what it is, but it is Amok Time. What do I love about Amok Time, aside from literally everything? A lot of the points that I brought up in the other episodes of this top 10 are all coming together in this episode. We have history and lore about the Vulcans, their culture, their planet, their biology, <laughs> their customs. We get to see like their outfits. We get a Spock centered episode. We get an episode where we get to see the relationship and the love and the brotherhood of the, the big three of Spock and Kirk and Bones. Very emotional. We get twists and surprises. It has us guessing from the very beginning of like what's going on with Spock. Why is he acting so weird? Celia Lovsky was amazing as T'Pau. She has another one of my favorite lines. Um, the air is the air. What can be done? <laughs> but yeah, this this episode had me really struggling to not like start crying while I was watching it. Kirk talking about how many times Spock sacrificed for him or like risked his life for him and there's no way that he could not help him in his time in need even to even to put into jeopardy his position his rank his career when spock asked kirk and bones to be essentially like his his best men at his wedding his two closest most best friends in the whole world and it's not really something that he would often admit to Bones that he is his one of his very best friends because their relationship is more of like a unspoken understanding as opposed to them vocalizing their friendship and love for each other. So this kind of like really hit home for me when he said it out loud. And then Spox outburst at the end when he sees Kirk alive. This big old grin on his face. So out of character. He let it slip and it was so great to see. So all of that is why this is my favorite episode of season two. Whew, that was a lot. Season two was absolutely amazing. It was hard to narrow it down to just 10. And I invite you guys to share your top 10, top five, number one episode of season two. And I look forward to seeing you guys as we finish up season three. And then we'll be doing another top 10 or maybe five or something. Who knows on that one? 
season three has been a lot more enjoyable than I was led to believe. So I'm really excited to look into that. And we're getting closer and closer to getting to the TOS movies, although they're still a ways away. I'm really just excited, but also sad that our journey with these particular characters is going to be coming to an end at some point. So I'm just trying to relish in this while it lasts, while I still have it, watching these for the first time and with you guys tagging along. Thank you guys so much for that and for being awesome. And I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Please share your thoughts in the comments about all these episodes and stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you again for watching and goodbye.